Hello guys, it's Shit Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco. Oh! And for this video I'm testing Windows 11 versus Windows 11. In the last videos I made testing Windows 11 versus Linux in terms of gaming performance, there were a lot of people telling me that somehow I was making an unfair comparison since I was using the normal Windows 11 versus the out of the box Nobara 41. Even though both systems were out of the box. Stop it. Get some help. The point is, people told me that I would be having way higher FPS on the Windows side if I was using a stripped down version of Windows. So basically a debloated Windows 11. And so I searched for Tiny11, which is one of the most used versions of uh, the bloated ele Windows 11 system, I believe. But at least when I was making this video, the link for the Windows 24 half 2 version was down. And after some research, I found about Nano 11. Kind of an ultra stripped down version of Windows bringing only the absolute things that Windows needs to work. So basically all the crap that you don't need for Windows to work, like co-pilots and oh, several other things that comes with Windows, Nano 11 doesn't have them. Thank God. And the moment I installed it I just felt that the system was way snappier. I mean it just responded much faster than the regular Windows 11 and also brought some really interesting links for the post installation process, which is also a nice touch. So now we have a lighter, debloated and much snappier system than the Windows than the regular Windows 11. So it is obviously faster in gaming. The thing is, is it really? This time we start with the Seto Corsa and even though we had several people claiming that the Windows performance or that the performance would get through the roof when using a stripped down Windows 11 version versus the normal one, well, it just didn't happen. And the results were all within the margin of error, so yeah. And the exact same happens in Counter-Strike 2, where the 9070 plus the 7800X 3D combo delivers exactly the same results with both Windows 11 or Nano 11, so no difference whatsoever here as well. And well, if you have the time to help me or this channel, lay an eye to the sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and for all of these you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. And I guess Plague Tale Requiem wouldn't be different at all, I mean, my first thought when people told me that Nano 11 was faster in gaming was that it was faster maybe for really old builds. Something from the past 4 years shouldn't suffer at all, at least technically. Nano 11 does feel more responsive though, but gaming wise, as seen, is the same. In a matter of fact, it was even slightly slower in Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p when compared to the regular Windows 11, which is strange to be honest, with the regular Windows 11 being 4% faster. And when enabling ray tracing, things don't change much between systems, where all the results are again within the margin of error. The biggest difference that I've seen so far was in the first Berserker Kazan, a recently released Unreal Engine 4 title, and here the results are quite the same at 1080p and 4K, but at 1440p it seems that Nano 11 delivered better 1% lows. The averages are ok too of course, but the biggest difference was definitely the smoother gameplay with Nano 11 at 1440p. But moving to Banisher's Ghost of New Eden, we have once again more of the exact same results. Results were both in the same systems, bloated or debloated, delivering the same exact gaming performance unlike stated by some people. I did hope that we had better performance with Nano 11 though. And one more time, the same applies to Fortnite. And if you somehow skip the intro, I'll say it again, that both the regular Windows 11 and Nano 11 were clean installed, to ensure that things go the way they're supposed to, because of course, if you're going from a 2 or 3 years Windows 11 installation that has seen a lot of updates to Nano 11, of course then you not you'll notice that the Windows 11 or the Nano 11, sorry, clean installation will be much faster. Besides that, clean installation versus clean installation, gaming wise, things seem to be the same. Going to PUBG, well, we actually had lower FPS at both 1080p and 1440p and this was using the replay feature, meaning that the results weren't gameplay related, so this means that Nano 11 did perform worse here, somehow, which is 
interesting. Moving to Call of Duty Black Ops 6, we see more of the same, with both systems delivering exactly the same results, with the regular Windows 11 delivering slightly lower 1% lows at 4K. But besides that, it is all the same. As for Stalker 2, we have a tendency just like the one that we had with PUBG, where Nano 11 is slightly slower at 1080p and 1440p. And in theory, of course, it should be faster. But again, the difference can be kind of considered margin of error here. But when we have three games with the same tendency, things start to smell. God of War Ragnarok also presents slightly lower results with Nano 11 at 1080p and 1440p. And even though the differences can be considered margin of error and are basically irrelevant gaming-wise, they are already happening in three games, which makes things look at least suspicious, if you ask me. As for Silent Hill 2, the performance was more of the same, once more, with the only difference being Nano 11 delivering higher 1% lows at 1080p, meaning that at 1080p we had a better gameplay experience as the 1% lows low, sorry, were closer to the averages, meaning that we had a higher smoothness. And moving to Spider-Man 2, we have a gameplay benchmark, so the results always vary a bit more. That's why we see a bit more 1% lows at 1080p for Nano 11, but also lower averages at 1440p. In here, I would say that things are exactly equal as they were before. And we got the exact same FPS for both systems in the Elder Scrolls Oblivion remake or remaster or whatever you want to call it, using ultra settings and lumens set to high. Nano 11 had nothing on the regular old Windows 11 that just flew through the sky and told everyone to shut up. And the regular Windows 11 still stays strong in The Last of Us Part 2, where it actually delivers better 1% lows than Nano 11. That should be performing much better, considering it is kind of an undressed system, featuring only what's really needed. And the last game benchmarked is Starfield in Akala City. And again, things don't look well for Nano 11, that had three games performing slightly worse at 1080p and 1440p, and two more of them where the 1% lows at 1080p were lower than the regular Windows 11. Odd, but again, I guess it is what it is. I'm just a messenger, I'm just here testing things for you guys to see how they work. And to finalize, we have the 19 games average, and even though the results are, well, expected, they're also disappointing. I believe everyone watching this video was hoping for some degree of performance uplift that just isn't happening, showing that the regular Windows 11, as long as you're not installing a load of crap on it, a load of shit on it, it will run the same as a stripped down version, as long as you're running it on a decent computer. Interesting, but of course, maybe if you're running a really old build, Nano 11 will be much better in gaming, because it is snappier, it performs better on Windows, but in gaming, it seems that's not the case. And well, people, as you saw, at least with the 7800X 3D and the 9070 combo, of course, 32 gigabytes, which is pretty common, common nowadays in terms of RAM capacity, Everything was the same. Clean installation of Windows 11, the regular 24 half 2 Windows 11 versus a clean installation of Nano 11 and the performance differences were null. If we go to the averages, it is literally within 1%, which is margin of error. So everything was working the same way. I myself was surprised. I was expecting something like at least 5 to 10% difference since Nano 11 is kind of a stripped down version. So we don't have as many processes in the background running the, uh, the same way that we have on the regular Windows 11. So I really, really thought that the gaming performance would be better on Nano 11. But well, you might say that I was just using a very, very, very recent system. Or you might say, well, but you are using AMD and AMD doesn't really suffer as much, maybe Nvidia. So if you want to see another video like this guy's testing, uh, Windows Windows 11 versus Tiny 11 or Ultra 11, leave a comment in the comment section and, and I'll possibly test it with older AMD GPUs and older NVIDIA GPUs as well. I'm thinking about testing as well Windows 10 versus Windows 11 again and maybe Windows 11 LTSC to see if there are differences as well. But yeah, unless you're using a really old system, let's say, 
RX 6800, RX 5700 XT, something like that with an older CPU, I don't think that you'll see any differences whatsoever. Next time, if you want, leave a comment in the comment section and I'll most likely test it with an older CPU as well, something or at least a slower CPU, something let's say like the 7600X or the 7500F and with slower GPUs as well to see if the performance is still the same or not really. By the way, I'm retesting Linux as well, no bar of 42 now with uh, with the RX 9070 XT to see the Windows versus no bar of performance to see if things are going the same way they were before with some AMD GPUs or not really. Again, thank you very much for watching. Leave your comment in the comment section. Let me know if you enjoyed the video. And if you did, again, comment in the comment section. And if you want me to remake this video with other GPUs, comment in the comment section as well. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Cheers.